Detectives investigating Caroline Hogg's murder trace a vital witness. They're flying to Germany to see him. President Reagan summons two senior Israeli ministers to Washington. Two youths plunge to their deaths after a chase through a Cornish resort. Steve Ovet pulls out of today's big race. And the Bristol man who's found the family he never knew he had. A man who was adopted when only a few weeks old has been celebrating his 47th birthday by meeting five of his brothers for the first time. David Kitchen of Yatton near Bristol only discovered his adoption certificate and the existence of his brothers when his adoptive father died recently. Graham Purchase reports. As far as David Kitchen is concerned, this was the birthday present of a lifetime after being brought up as an only adopted child and reaching the age of 47 before discovering that he has six natural brothers five of whom were reunited today. We couldn't be anybody else. Hello. 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 Glad to see you. <laughs> Here Hello, Tim. Hello. 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 Uh, well, it's like Christmas and birthdays and getting married and having children all on the same day and all at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely unbelievable. Yeah. Were you able to recognise these, these children? Oh, no, no trouble. No trouble. Yeah. I, uh, my aunt had a photograph which she kindly gave me the other day and uh, I've been mm. looking at nothing else ever since. Do you resent the fact that mm. your adoptive parents didn't tell you you were adopted and that not you had a, a family of your own? No, not a bit, because they brought me up as their own son and they were loving and kind and everything that you could wish for. And there's no question, uh, they're both dead now, and of course that's, it's because they're both dead that I've been able to get access to all this information. It's just incredible, we just can't believe that you know, a family can be so lucky, and it is luck really, the people that we've managed to speak to who've remembered and the links that are there, having to have found the links. Um, the one Aunt Julia who held the secret, um, we found her at Burnham-on-Sea, which is uh, so ridiculously close, you know. David Kitchen's only regret is that he hasn't been able to track down a sixth brother named Keith, who was also adopted, and like David, until a short time ago, doesn't yet realise that he has a large family of his own. What a nice way to end the weekend news. That's all. Good night. Tonight's presenters, Gerald Haycock and Vivian Krieger. Good evening, and in tonight's programme, the demolition of the St Anne's board mills in Bristol. Local councillors say the work is releasing dangerous levels of asbestos. The VC-10 is taking on a new lease of life as supertanker. And the man who's met the brothers he never knew existed. An engineer from Yatton is today recovering from the shock of a lifetime, meeting four brothers he didn't know he had. Until recently, David Kitchen thought he was the only child of the people who brought him up. But after they died, he found his adoption papers and discovered that far from being alone, he has six brothers. Oh, well done. Hey. Well done. For David Kitchen, it was a double celebration. On his 47th birthday, he was to meet four of his brothers for the first time. I'm not dreaming, am I? I mean, I'm not going to wake up in a couple of minutes. He wakes up every morning with this big <laughs> grin on his face. <laughs> and if anybody stands still for more than a couple of minutes, I tell them the story. I, 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 I don't know how many times I've told it now. I keep getting dragged off to be, told, to be shown to somebody else. <laughs> it was, David said, an extraordinary feeling, walking out to meet the brothers who, for most of your life, you never knew existed. Hello, Nick. Oh, it was. Oh, right. <laughs> Mike, yeah. you'll have to be in. You couldn't be anybody else. Oh, Hello. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Glad to see you. <laughs> Here, uh, Hello. 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 H
Uh, well, it's like Christmas and birthdays and getting married and having children all on the same day and all at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely unbelievable. Yeah. Were you able to recognise these, these children? Oh, no, no trouble. No trouble. No. I, uh, my aunt had a photograph which she kindly gave me the other day and uh, I've been yeah. looking at nothing else ever since. He's just so overwhelmed, as he says. You know, it's like having all our happiest events rolled into one day. Mm. Um, we just couldn't believe that it could happen, you know. It's uh, so incredible that he could have found five five brothers all you know all the same mm. marriage um the most we could have hoped for was um had he been a minor in just some teenage indiscretion that um his mother might have married and he'd got some half brothers and this is really what we were looking for um it's just incredible we just can't believe that you know a family can be so lucky and it is luck really the people that we've managed to speak to who've remembered and the links that are there having to have found the links um, the one Aunt Julia who held the secret, um, we found her at Burnham-on-Sea, which is mm. uh, so ridiculously close, you know. Um, was he upset when he discovered he was adopted? Not upset, I think stunned. Um, he'd had his one or two suspicions. His place of birth hadn't been quite right, having been brought up in Yorkshire. Uh, do you feel you missed out on a lot, not knowing your own family? Well, yes, inevitably. I, mean, I was brought up as an only child. I always wished I'd had some sisters or something, or brothers. These will do. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's one yeah. little cloud on the horizon, and that's Keith, who mm. was adopted at the same time as I was, way back mm. in 1936, and mm. he's disappeared without trace. Another brother in America is still on his way to meet David, so Keith will then be the only missing link in this extraordinary story caused by family complications half a century ago. A happy ending, that report from Graham Purchase. Barry Took now helps to uncover another top secret. It's Top Secrets with Chris Kelly. Joanna Benjamin. And now, here's the man with all the secrets, Barry Chuck. Hello, and welcome to Top Secret, the game where it's fun to find out. Well, it's time to meet our final guest on this week's Top Secret. Well, would you tell us your name and where you come from, please? David Franklin, and I come from Bristol. Well, let's tell everyone at home and in our studio audience what David Franklin's secret is. <laughs> okay, so it's your turn to start again. First, a clue, and it's this. He found a lot where he thought there was nothing. <laughs> David, um, is this treasure of some sort? No. In a sense, it is. You mean it has a value? Oh, yes. Was it buried somewhere? <laughs> uh, no. You're allowed to confuse them as much as you like, but I can correct you from time to time. But you found something of value that, that surprised you and you were able to make some money from it, is that right? Not make money from, no. It's a spiritual value. A spiritual value. Was, um, was it something to do with an ancestor of yours? Yes. Was it a possession of this ancestor? Uh... The cuckoo says we move on, so we may never yes. know the answer to that. The cuckoo says yes. No, there's no possessions no involved. Possession. Is it a person of some sort? Yes. A person from way, way back, or...? No, a person still living. Still living. Um, a relative that you didn't know you had? Yes. Twin brother? No. More so closer than that? Um, we can't be much closer than a twin brother. Well, <laughs> the audience had a half clapped or Yes, well, it was a half sister. brother. They probably oh. <laughs> no, no. I'm sorry to be facetious, but it's just your smile turns me off. No, oh, David, was in fact a, a twin sister? <laughs> no. <laughs> but he was, he was a human twin we're talking about. Not, not a twin. twin. Not, not a, a twin. twin. A brother. A brother. A brother. <laughs> And you didn't know of his existence, is that correct? That's right. Older than you? Yes. 
Were you told that you'd meet this man by a clairvoyant or something? No. Found a lot. You would meet him at an auction or something, did you? <laughs> <laughs> At this program, anything is possible. I think, it, I think the, the clue means is more that, than one. Is it a double entendre with the word lot? I mean, is it a... No, no, no not really. No. No. It means more than one, actually. Oh, thank you for that. <laughs> um, oh, gosh. several brothers. Thank you. He says, which I'm going to pretend I'm saying, uh, did you have several brothers? Yes. <laughs> or something, or twins, or more than I, one? I don't have a twin. Quinn? Uh, uh, no, no, no. Gosh. Um, it's not as close as that. You're so, you're so, I mean, you're so much on it, I don't think we can really draw it out any further, because you really have got it when you say more than one brother, several brothers. I mean, you well, really wait, have well, to... You all fostered out or adopted as children? I was, yes. I'm actually, I'm taking up... Uh, uh, no, 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 I mean, you actually, you've, you have solved the problem. Will you, will you tell them, David, yes. actually, what your secret is? Well, until about three months ago, I thought I was an only child, and now I find I've got six brothers. Oh, my. <laughs> six brothers. How's that right? I mean, you don't, I mean, I think they knew as, yes. as anything yes. actually got it. Would you like to tell us your story? How did this all come about? Well... I discovered when my adoptive father died that I'd been his adopted son, and I found my adoption papers, and that led to the discovery of my proper birth certificate, which in turn led to the discovery of my family and the six brothers. Uh, one, like me, was also adopted, oh. and in the last few weeks we've also located him. Great. But so how, there are seven of us. How, how did you locate them in the first place? Um, what well, was the train of events? My wife traced my late mother's sister uh -huh. in Stratford Maiden. Yeah. And uh, we went to see her, and then she produced some photographs showing the five brothers that she knew about. And um, we all met, and it just happened that the day we all met was my birthday. Oh. Oh. And uh, I wish we had all the, the brothers, uh, uh, but we don't in the studio, but we've got some of the brothers. Well, three of them along. Three of them. Yes. Uh, well, could, we, could we meet the brothers now, ladies and gentlemen? Ian, how did you feel when it turned out that you had a brother? Surprised at first, but absolutely marvellous afterwards. It, uh, most marvellous moment in my life, really. Really? Yeah. Long lost brother. It's oh, a it's, it's rare it's thing. It is. And uh, you're all getting together fairly soon, I think. That's right, yes. It, uh, we all met initially, well, all this, except for Philip, who was in America at the time. We met uh, David uh, mm -hmm. on his birthday. Mm -hmm. And Keith, the one we just discovered or rediscovered, yeah. um, we're meeting up with him in the very near future. We don't know exactly when, but yeah. the sooner the better. Twins? Well, you're astonished. No. astonished. And, and well, I became a seventh son, so I was quite amazed by that's that. That's lovely. And are you all married? I mean, we don't yeah, have to yeah. find seven brides for seven brothers. <laughs> <laughs> no, not quite. No, it's a, it's a very warm and uh, delightful story, and I'm I'm glad you shared it with us. Thank you very much for being our guest on Top Secret. <laughs> for today, so thanks to our contestants and to our panel, Chris and Floella, Alfred and Lindsay. And from me, until next time, take care and good night. Now on BBC One, it's time for Points West. Tonight's presenters, Gillian Miles and Gerald Haycock. Good evening, and on tonight's programme, back on the rails again, 17 years after beaching Templecombe Station reopens.
Delays in building the Sand Bay Sea defences. And two brothers well, meet each other for the I first time. <laughs> An engineer from Yatton near Bristol today met the last of six brothers he didn't know he had. David Kitchen wasn't aware he'd been adopted until he discovered his adoption certificate last May. That was the first shock. The second was finding that he had six brothers. Graham Purchase takes up the story. David Kitchen and his wife Sylvia have spent four months tracing his brothers, but the last one, who, like David, was adopted when just a baby, could not be found, until his wife heard about the story on the BBC and contacted the Kitchens. How do you feel? Well, uh, sort of like a strawberry jelly, I think. <laughs> turned out to be a boat transporter from the Midlands who finally met David when he made a delivery to Bristol Docks today. Oh, how are we? Oh, very well, thanks. Go on, Dan. Well, that's the set, isn't it? Shattered. Absolutely shattered. Because I've got no idea. Just, you know, it, it isn't as if they were lost. I, I just never knew we had them. And uh, just, uh, well, I'm, I'm still shaking. <laughs> well, now you've met him, do you think, do you think he's worth having? Oh, I should think so. <laughs> <laughs> we, we look very sweet. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> How are you going to catch up on all these years you haven't known each oh, other? Oh, no idea. <laughs> we just try. We shall uh, just take it a, a day at a time. <laughs> <laughs> David, now you've met your last long-lost brother. Yes. What are your reactions? Well, I, I, it's the most wonderful thing. Uh, it, it, we never thought it could possibly happen because we'd just got nothing to go on at all. And the other five were dead easy to find because, I mean, we knew what we were looking for. Well, indeed, uh, you know, we, we, we had some positive evidence for them. But, uh, you know, all we knew was that Keith, Gavin, sorry, <laughs> uh, had, had disappeared at a very early age. And, well... Um, you know, unless he found us, we couldn't think there'd be any way uh, that we'd be able to trace him. How much difference is it going to make to family life now that David's got six brothers he didn't know he had? Well, it's already made a difference to our lives. We've um, been in quite close contact with all of the brothers since we met in the last couple of months. And uh, I don't think life will ever be back to what we knew as normal. It, it's lovely. It really is. Yes. story. Barry Took now helps to uncover another top secret. It's Top Secret with Chris Kelly, Joanna Benjamin, Alf the Past, and Lindsay DeBoer. Hello and welcome to Top Secret, the game where it's fun to find out. And a special welcome to Lindsay DePaul, who joins us for the first time tonight on the panel. Alfred, you're a very lucky man, you know. You, you, you must admit that we always surround you with, with beautiful women. Absolutely. First it, was, Absolutely. it was Jan and Lisa, now Fluella yeah. and Lindsay. You seem to get on so well with them all. Well, I've discovered a new aftershave that seems to attract women very strongly. It's, it's, it smells of money. <laughs> <laughs> it clearly works. Right, are you ready to play the game? Of course you are, you have no option. Uh, let's meet our first guest, because they've got a secret. Right, on this occasion, I'm not going to ask you to give us your names, I'm just going to call you Mr. A and Mr. B. Is that OK? Mm -hmm. That's fine. Now, for you at home and our studio audience, here comes their secret. But if you want to play along with the panel, then close your eyes now. <laughs> All right, open your eyes. Now, it's Chris Kelly to start the questioning. But first, a clue, and it's this. Panel, it's a case of history repeating itself. Gentlemen, are you related? No, not at all. No. But even so, do you have the same name? No. Do you each have the name of a historical figure? 
Yes. Were these figures associated in history? Were they... Ah, the cuckoo goes. Always goes at the crucial time, you see. Fluella, it's all yours. So, historical name. Uh, were you born on the same day? No. No, the no, same date? No? No. Um, we don't think so, no. Don't think so. Yes. Is, it, is it far back in history? Way, way back in history? Do you mean us or the, or the, or the characters? <laughs> the character, who you, the historical character. <laughs> it wouldn't be that wrong. <laughs> Cromwell, Cromwell time? Uh, or further back than that? Well, w uh, way back. Way back, way, way, way back. Way back. Um, Yes, it's way, way, way back. I mean, it's way back to Alfred Marx. It's not Alfred Marx. Yes, it's, it's way, way back. It's not, not, not it's, it's historical. It's not prehistory. It's historical. English history we're looking for? Yeah. Harold? Will yes, you... darling? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> King Harold I was looking for. Well, you won't find him here. Not, they're not biblical names, are they, really, Sean? No. No, you said English history, didn't you? You did say English history. That's the one subject I was lousy at. English history is <laughs> terrible. Well, the cuckoo has China. It's moved to Lindsay the Poor. I'd like to try and determine the century. You say it was before Cromwell? Before the, the 1100s, 1000 or so? My goodness. Oh, goodness. Well, um, my history wasn't too wonderful either. Uh, but it's, it's, yes, it's... Was it, was it, was it uh, regal at all? Were you, were you kings or...? No, no, not regal, I wouldn't no, say. No. But one, well it's fair to say that one is... It's very confusing too, because there's really only one. One is a name, and the other is a rank. Of course. <laughs> or office. Now, you've all had a chance to go. Now, it's a free for all time. Was this, like... was this an outlaw? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Robin Hood. Robin Hood. <laughs> yes. There you go. And, you sure not a name but a title. <laughs> yeah, well Absolutely right. Absolutely right. You're well, well earned, chaps. You've got it between you. Now, you are... Robin Hood. You are Robin Hood and you are... I'm the Sheriff of Nottingham. Good heavens. <laughs> well, actually, this is Councillor Birkinshaw, who is currently the, uh, the Sheriff of Nottingham. And uh, you've got your finery behind the yes, scenery. Right. Would you yes. like to go off and get into it so we can see what the Sheriff of Nottingham really yes. looks like? Thank you. The first time on the programme. Off you go. So I'll talk to Robin Hood. Put yourself up to the table, Robin. Right. Now, Robin, uh, you could, anybody can go around saying they're Robin Hood, but can you prove it? Oh, yes. What, what, what proof have you got? A birth certificate. Mm -hmm. Robin Hood. Boy. Yes, that's right. I hope so. <laughs> 26th of May, 1951. That's your birthday. Registration District, Nottingham. Subdistrict, Nottingham West. Well, that's absolute proof to me. It does suit you, it does suit well, you. you. <laughs> Who's come on with you? Who's got somebody come on as a juggler? Come on with yeah. you. That's George, my attendant. George! Oh, hello, George. Good what evening. are you carrying, may I ask? These are the sheriff's maces. The sheriff's maces? Yes, these are used several times uh, a year, mm. mainly Crown Court mm. and, of course, every council meeting, first Monday of each month. Yes. What do you do, bash people with them? Oh, what? no, indeed, no, no, no. <laughs> they look like Olympic torches. <laughs> <laughs> nice. how, how, how long, I mean, this office goes back many, many years. When, when was the original sheriff of Nottingham? Well, it dates back to possibly the 12th century. 12th but, century. Uh, the record, records are 1449. Yes. And uh, uh, what did he do then? What did the sheriff well, do then? His duties were like the tax collector of today. Oh. He was a very unpopular man, and he kept discipline in the cities and uh, collected the tithes and taxes for oh. the for the monarch. Very good. Well, what do you do today? Well, today, uh, unfortunately, uh, those duties have all gone, and now it's more or less a civic office where I help the Lord Mayor to promote Nottingham. Thank you, the Sheriff of Nottingham, Councillor Birkinshaw, thank and thank you, Robin Hood, for being our guests on <laughs> Top Secret. <laughs> oh, our next guest is ready and waiting. Will you tell us your name and where you come from, please? My name is Kim Taylor, and I come from Chelsea. Now, for you at home and our studio audience, here comes Kim Taylor's secret. <laughs> uh, I go 
Duncan. Noella, it's your turn to start the questioning. Uh, first a clue, and it's this. It's her business, but it's also a duty. Business, but also a duty. Uh, is it designing of some sort? No. Is it a, so you work at, you work at your secret, do you? Yes. In Chelsea? Yes. Um, is it to do with flowers? No. <laughs> is it to do with something that's funny? No. No. <laughs> it's a serious business then, um, is it? Yes. Is it something that any girl would like to work at? Um, would any girl like to work at it, do you think? No. No. It's a specialised sort of thing. Anyway, the cuckoo's gone. We turn to Alfred. Hello, Kim. They smiled, but they also had some sort of admiration. There's a little giggle. Uh, business, but also a duty. You're not the only woman in the Chelsea Pensioners Hospital, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Is this a unique job? Are you the only one doing this? Um, yeah. Is it a service you give to people? Mm, not really, no. Do people come to you? Or yes. do you go to them? Uh, people come to me. Do you have a shop? No. A stall? No. They contact you by telephone? No. no, it's a sort of shop, but it's not called a shop. It's not uh, called, called something shop. else. It's a stall, a barrow. Mm. No. no, no, it's a bit bigger than a barrow. In fact, quite a lot bigger than a barrow. And it's the profession that we're looking for, Lindsay, before your turn. You work alone? Yes. And does this take training? Yes. How long was your training? Um, four years altogether. And you go to a college to train? Yeah. And you, it's unusual for a girl to do this? Yes. So there's a college for men? Um, no. So very few people took the course that uh, Kim took. I see. And you don't... It, it, well, I'd like to tell me where you actually work. You don't work in a shop. They come to you. Yeah. And you perform this in the street? No. <laughs> <laughs> Saved by the cuckoo. They don't do it in the street. It's, um, I don't know what to do to, to help you without giving it away. Is it customs and import duty? It's but in Chelsea? Yeah. It's customs but not import. Is it to do with the river? No. <laughs> I hope not. And men, you should men do it. Nothing to do with sport? No. Is it... Uh, is it to do with liquor? Yeah. Do you go along to bonded, bonded liquor houses and, and, and test the scotch? No. I would like to. <laughs> <laughs> but it's something like that. I mean, it's to do with liquor, it's to do with whiskey or, or spirits. No, not spirits. Wine? Wine. Uh, anybody no. like, no, have a wild guess. It's Liqueurs? Just, no. Not bigger than that, much, much bigger. Uh, are, are you a brewer? Right on the cuckoo, you've got it. You are what, in fact? I'm a master brewer. A master <laughs> brewer. That's what she does for a living. And uh, how did you come to become a, a, a master brewer? Well, originally I did a degree in chemistry, and then I followed that up by a master's in brewing science. And where do you, where do you practice this? At the Orange Brewery in London. That's where you, you brew, and also it's a public house? Yes, yeah. so the, the, yeah, the brewery's in the cellar of the public house. Do you take your work home with you? <laughs> <laughs> your, your, your pub in Chelsea, I mean, what is fascinating, you must get all sorts of people in there, show business people. We do. And, yeah, uh, yeah, and Chelsea pensioners and oh, that well. sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, that's obviously a cue for me to say, well, hiding behind the scenery now, we have the lovely <laughs> Janella G and some of her boyfriends. Lads, well done, chaps. How nice to see you all here, frothing tankards. What have we got? Have we got the SW1 or the SW2 here? Um, well, there was a mixture of both came, so you've probably got the one. Oh, you don't trust us. The SW1, yeah. SW2, I don't know. Yeah. This is yeah. a different the, strength. The like two it. is very dangerous. Are you a big, uh, are you a big a beer drinker? I've become a beer drinker really? since I've discovered this stuff. I oh, I never see. Have but you don't look, I mean, you think of beer drinkers as being rather my shape. I'm hiding it. <laughs> oh, are you really? <laughs> And you, you go to the pub regularly? I do. I yeah. don't even live nearby. I travel across London to go. To anyway, London. thank you for being our special guest, Brunella G. Thank you, gentlemen. It's really nice to be on very <laughs> And thank you, Kim Taylor, for being our guest on Bob <laughs> Well, let's meet our third guest now. Will you tell us your name, sir, and where you come from? My name is Albert Pridey, and I come from Gloucestershire. 
And here for everybody except the panel is Albert Friday's secret coming up on the screen now. <laughs> The true panel is this. What happened to these ladies wasn't a bit ladylike. And Alfred, it's your turn to start. Hello, Albert. Is this happening in Gloucestershire? Yes. Was it a one-off? <laughs> yes. Was it an outing of some sort? <laughs> Not really. It wasn't a bit ladylike. Were they in drag? Were they all dressed as fellows? <laughs> they were all dressed alike. Oh, it was, <laughs> they were all dressed alike. They were. Are we talking about the human ladies, or are we talking about animal ladies? Animal ladies. You know the fellow that put the stockings on those cows for that commercial, I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, the cuckoo's gone. It's Lindsay. Is this a hobby of yours? <laughs> <laughs> well, not really. You do it for, This is your living? Yeah. Um, so, are you a farmer of some sort? Right. Yeah. And something happened to your animals, which, which, yeah. which wasn't ladylike. They were cows, because they're female. Right. Should pull the other leg, shouldn't I? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what could happen? Did they fall on their... Uh, uh, Excuse me. Um, Bums is the word. Yes. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Uh, does it, does it, uh, sorry. Does it uh, involve a, a bull of some sort? <laughs> no, no, don't go down that road. No, no, no. Oh, was this a stunt you organised? No, certainly not. It was, <laughs> it was an accident? Yes. You're doubtful about that? I am. <laughs> <laughs> was it at milking time? No, no. Did it happen indoors or out? Uh, outdoors. Was water involved? Not really. Not really. Not really. Not really. Were there any people around at the time? No. If there were people around, maybe it would have happened to Ella. No. Water wasn't involved. Was milk involved? Not really. Not really. The cows, no. the cows in a yes. field, they're in the field. Well, yes. And they were dressed up in drag. <laughs> Yes? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> You're miles off. Everybody like to have a shot Something at it. Something unladylike. Something Obviously un unusual for cows to do this. <laughs> was there a natural phenomenon that occurred? Well, yes, it was. A natural phenomenon. Have you ever seen yeah. it happen before? I know. Once. They order the poo at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank heavens the cuckoo has gone. <laughs> you don't want that sort of play school language on this show. <laughs> Though. It's lucky. Not if yes, it falls on you. <laughs> <laughs> you're luckier if you're in Texas, however. Albert, you've beaten the panel. Tell them your secret. I had a herd of drunken cows. Now, <laughs> 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 would you like to tell us the story, how it happened? Well, yes. It should never have happened, obviously, but we were feeding some bad hay with sugar beet and uh, they were gorging it down in no trouble at all and I went away for a day you see and met some friends and had a few drinks at night and came back home about midnight and met my son who was in charge of the cows and I said everything all right he said yes he said uh, two cows fell down tonight with a chill but we put them in the barn and I thought well that's a bit funny but can't do much at midnight so off to bed I went next morning half past five he was shaking me by the shoulder Dad, Dad, come quick, the cows are dying. <laughs> they won't get up. I said, you must be joking. So I shot out of bed and went there. Sure enough, there were 16 cows lying down, and the rest was wobbling. <laughs> and the, the ones that were lying down were just as if you'd gone round with a mallet and tapped them on the head. They were laying with the legs out behind them and back, <laughs> over and across. One got his leg on the top of his head. <laughs> I didn't know what was wrong. Right. I didn't know what was wrong. I didn't But didn't, didn't it strike you when you heard uh, Knees Up Mother Brown coming to the field? <laughs> what did the milk taste like? <laughs> milk stout, I think. <laughs> but, 
Well done. Well done, Alfred. Yes. And well done, Albert. Thank you very much for telling us your story, and thanks for being our guest on Top Secret. <laughs> Albert Tyler. Thank you. is here and ready to challenge the panel. Will you tell us your name, sir, and where you come from? Paul Emery from Shoreham by Sea in Sussex. And here for you at home and our studio audience is Paul Emery's secret coming up on your screens now. <laughs> well, that's the secret, and here for you, Lindsay, is the clue. He came to London and won his bet. Go, Lindsay. Is this something that you do as a hobby? From time to time, yes. It must be something quite impressive because the audience went, ooh, so it isn't something funny. It's something that you've done that's good or heroic. Correct. And... Uh... Well, <laughs> I'm, not to, I'm not going to argue about heroic. If you believe it's heroic... Oh, uh, I apologise, I didn't hear the word. Ah, oh, no. <laughs> but he well, was, it wasn't heroic. particularly heroic. It was, a, it was brave, but not it was in the inner sense of... Something that demanded some sort of strength? Or... or... Yes. Uh, physical strength yes. or strength of yeah, physical strength? Yes. Strength. You don't think of this as, as being as something that uh, requires strength, but it does. So, so it's something that, that requires strength, is not in heroic, but is in some way impressive. Is it something to do with the sea, because you come from the sea, or is it something to do with London? Uh, something to do with London. And, it, and it's fair to say, panel, it's to do with the arts. Chris? Is it a performing art rather than, say, painting? <laughs> yes. Were you on the ground when you achieved this, or off it? <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> Perhaps a little bit raised. A little bit raised from the ground. Yes. Nothing to do with a circus? No. Or dancing of any sort? No. Was it in a theatre that you did it? Yes. To all intents and purposes, a theatre of sorts, yes. Was this a... You don't, yes, you're getting on so well. It wasn't really a theatre. A curtain does not go up and down. It's not theatre in that sense. It is a, a, a place where... An arena. E event, a, an oh, arena, so yes. It's something to do with karate or judo, is it? <laughs> is it? Is it a martial art? No. So is it a sort of, like, acting? Yes, there is an element of acting involved. <laughs> in, with no, are you a mus musician? Yes. With uh, lots of instruments? About 50 instruments? Uh, just possibly, as you're getting... Possibly 60. <laughs> yes, I was going to say, how many instruments were involved, actually? 60, I see. Yes. Mm, anyway, the cuckoo's gone and it's Alfred's turn. Would it help us if we discovered what the bet was? Would that help? Yes, that's the answer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so it would help you enormously. Uh, six, 60 musicians. It's going to be an orchestra, can't it? It's going to be an orchestra. <laughs> what was the bet with the orchestra? That they could all play in tune? <laughs> I did try to achieve that, yes. Did you think that can orchestra? Uh -huh. Something like the LSO and somebody said you'll never do it and you came up and did. Yeah, oh. Correct, yes, that's it. Well, I, I think you've got it for all intents and purposes. It's, it's not the, you know, the fine tuning, but it's, that's the answer. Your secret is what, actually, Paul? That um, somebody bet me ten pounds about uh, eight years ago that I wouldn't conduct at the Royal Albert Hall before the age of 40. Well. And I achieved it with 10 days to go. <laughs> well, when did you first conceive the desire to become a conductor? It's not sort of an everyday thing, is it? Well, I belonged to the Royal Chorus Society in the early 60s under Sir Malcolm Sargent, yeah. and I always wondered what it was like to be down there conducting at the Royal Albert Hall. And, and, and you, you, you practiced as a child? You yes. learned to read music and, and Yes, I, and I formed, then I started forming societies in the south of England from 1969. Adrian Bolt, the late Sir Adrian Bolt comes into it somewhere. What's yes, that? so oh. I went up to see him to see how best I could achieve my ends. And he mm. said, if you want to become a conductor, hire the Royal Albert Hall. So I took his advice. Oh, I see. It wasn't, <laughs> <laughs> was, it, was it with Adrian Bolt that you had the bet? Uh, no, it wasn't. It oh, was, I see. Uh, no. Just... Um, a and other sort of thing. Yes, and I found out that um, when I went to collect my ten pounds that he'd passed away two years ago. Well, <laughs> it's smashing to have you on the programme. Thank you. Paul Emery, thank you for being our guest on Top Secret.
Now it's time to meet our final guest on this week's Top Secret. Well, do you tell us your name and where you come from, please? David Franklin, and I come from Bristol. Well, let's tell everyone at home and in our studio audience what David Franklin's secret is. <laughs> It's your turn to start again. First, a clue, and it's this. He found a lot where he thought there was nothing. <laughs> David, um, is this treasure of some sort? No. In a sense, it is. You mean it has a value? Oh, yes. Was it buried somewhere? <laughs> uh, no. You're allowed to confuse them as much as you like, but I can correct you from time to time. But please. you found something of value that... that surprised you and you're able to make some money from it is that right not make money from no it's a spiritual value a spiritual value w um, was it something to do with an ancestor of yours yes was it a possession of this ancestor uh... the cuckoo says we move on so we may never yes. know the answer to that <laughs> cuckoo says yes. no there's no possessions no involved possession. hmm. is it a person of some sort yes person from way, way back, or...? No, a person still living. Still living. Um, a relative that you didn't know you had? Yes. Uh, twin brother? No. More, so closer than that? Um, we can't be much closer <laughs> than a twin brother. Well, the audience sort of half-clapped or... Yes, well, it was a half-brother, they probably oh. thought. <laughs> no, no. I'm sorry to be facetious, but it's just your smile turns me off. No, David, was in fact a, a, a twin sister? <laughs> no. <laughs> but he was, he was a human twin we're talking about. Not, not a twin. twin. Not, not a, a twin. twin, a brother. A brother. A brother. <laughs> and you didn't know of his existence, is that correct? That's right. <laughs> Older than you? Yes. Were you told that you'd meet this man by a clairvoyant or something? No. Found a lot. Do you need him an auction or something, did you? <laughs> <laughs> At this program, anything is possible. I think, it, I think the, the clue means it, more than one. Is it a double entendre with the word lot? I mean, is it a... No, no, no not really. No. No. It means more than one, actually. Oh, thank you for that. Um, <laughs> oh, gosh. Thank you. He says, which I'm going to pretend I'm saying, uh, did you have several brothers? Yes. <laughs> Twins or something, or twins, or more than I, one? I don't have a twin. Quinn? Uh, uh, no, no, no. Gosh. Um, it's not as close as that. You're so, you're so, I mean, you're so much on it, I don't think we can really draw it out any further, because you really have got it when you say more than one brother, several brothers. I mean, you were really well, have you, to... you all fostered out or adopted as children? I was, yes. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm taking up... Uh, uh, Lindsay's no, time. No, I mean, you actually, you've, you have solved the problem. Will you, will you tell them, David, yes. actually, what your secret is? Well, until about three months ago, I thought I was an only child, and now I find I've got six brothers. Oh, my. <laughs> six brothers. How's that right? I mean, you don't, I mean, I think they knew as, yes. as anything yes. actually got it. Would you like to tell us your story? How did this all come about? Well... I discovered when my adoptive father died that I'd been his adopted son, and I found my adoption papers, and that led to the discovery of my proper birth certificate, which in turn led to the discovery of my family and the six brothers. Uh, one, like me, was also adopted, oh. and in the last few weeks we've also located him. Great. But so how, there are seven of us. How, how did you locate them in the first place? I mean, um, what well, was the train of events? My wife traced my late mother's sister uh -huh. in Stratford Maiden. Yeah. And uh, we went to see her, and then she produced some photographs showing the five brothers that she knew about. And um, we all met, and it just happened that the day we all met was my birthday. Oh. And uh, I, I wish we had all the, the brothers, uh, uh, but we don't in the studio, but we've got some of the brothers. Three of them along. Three of them. Uh, yes. well, could, we, could we meet the brothers now? <laughs> And how did you feel when it turned out that you had a brother? Surprise at first, but absolutely marvellous afterwards. It, uh, most marvellous moment in my life, really. Really? Long lost brother. It's oh, a it's, it's, rare thing. It is. 
And uh, you're all getting together fairly soon, I think. That's right, yes. It, uh, we all met initially, well, all of us, except for Philip, who was in America at the time. We met uh, David uh, mm -hmm. on his birthday. Mm -hmm. And Keith, the one we just discovered, or rediscovered, yeah. uh, we're meeting up with him in the very near future. We don't know exactly when, but the sooner the better. Twins? Well, you're Astonished. No. Astonished. And, and well, I became a seventh son, so I was quite amazed by that. That's lovely. And are you all married? I mean, we don't yeah, have to yeah. find seven brides for seven brothers. <laughs> <laughs> no, not quite. No, it's a, it's a very warm and uh, delightful story, and I'm, I'm glad you shared it with us. Thank you very much for being our guest on Top Secret. <laughs> time for today, so thanks to our contestants and to our panel, Chris and Floella, Alfred and Lindsay. And from me, until next time, take care and good night. <laughs>